What is up everybody, JT Dangerously here once again and I am back for my week 8 NFL predictions. Now week 7, we went 9-5-1 and one, thanks to Denver beating Houston. So that was a big time win for sure and we're back on the winning track. Before I get into these picks, I want to congratulate the Chicago Cubs for getting to the World Series. Saturday was amazing. Like if you did not see that Dodgers-Cubs game, game 6 in Chicago, it was one of the greatest reactions for a baseball team. It's a long time coming for the Chicago Cubs. As a Red Sox fan, I was happy. And honestly, I am going to pick the Chicago Cubs to win the World Series. I have them winning in six. So, of course, comment below who you're picking to win the World Series this year. If you're baseball fans like I am. Of course, I'm a Red Sox fan, but my baseball heart wants to see the Cubs break this 108-year streak. So, let's get. other than that, let's get right into these NFL picks, starting with the buys this week. So... To let you uh, to get you fantasy owners uh, set up for this week, we have six teams that are on a bye this week, and it's a short, short. Sh there's not a lot of games this week, so of course the buys are for the L.A. Rams, the Miami Dolphins, the New York Giants, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the San Francisco 49ers, which of course they're losing even if they're on a bye, and the Baltimore Ravens. So if you have any of those, any of those. If, if you have players on any of those six teams, make sure you have a re suitable replacement going into this fantasy football week eight matchup. Now let's get right into these picks. Starting with the Thursday night matchup, the Jacksonville Jaguars and two Nashville Blade of Tennessee Titans. Now, coming from me, uh, people, this is not the most interesting matchup. Um, it's the most... Un like I'm, I don't even know if I'm even going to watch this game. I mean, it's two teams coming off a loss. They're not interesting. They're both not interesting teams in the AFC South. And honestly, I'm just going to make a straight-out pick. I'm picking the Tennessee Titans in this game because what the hell. I mean, it's not, it's not, a, it's not an interesting game to me, honestly. So I'm going to take the Tennessee Titans over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now the Sunday slate. And, of course, we get another London game. So that's a 6.30 start on the, East, on the West Coast and a 9.30 start on the East Coast with the Washington Redskins playing the Cincinnati Bengals, and this is a Bengals home game. Now, of course, the Washington, Reds Washington Redskins did lose to the um, to the Detroit Lions, of course, and the Cincinnati Bengals did beat the Cleveland Browns. The, biggest, the two biggest concerns in this game, of course, Josh Norman's concussion. Got to keep your eye on that if you have the Redskins defense. And Jeremy Hill running back who hurt his, his arm and his wrist. So if you have Jeremy Hill on your fantasy team, Keep an eye on him all the way up to this game because we don't know if he's going to play. They, the Bengals did look good. Tyler Eifert is back, so they got their tight end. A.J. Green, if you did not see that A.J. Green catch in the end of the first quarter against the Browns, it's A.J. Green. He makes those kind of catches in college. He did that so many times in college. What makes you think he was going to do it here? And he's so good. They have the Redskins, of course, who did lose to the Detroit Lions, I got that pick right. I picked against Washington, and they lost. So in this matchup, I am going to pick the Cincinnati Bengals to continue the streak because, of course, Baltimore's not Baltimore's not uh, Baltimore's on a bye, and Pittsburgh's on a bye, and Cleveland's not really in the chase in the NFC, in the AFC North. So this could be a big one up in the North for the Cincinnati Bengals. So I'm taking the Bengals over the Redskins, and now the Sunday slate. 10 a.m. starts on the East Coast. I mean the West Coast. 1 a.m. Uh, 1 p.m. starts on the on the East. I mean West Coast 10 a.m. East Coast 1 p.m. Starting with the of course the Seattle Seahawks. My Seattle Seahawks heading to the Superdome to play Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. Now of course the Seattle Seahawks tied with the Arizona Cardinals last night on Sunday Night Football. Maybe the most a defensive matchup, but a lot of mistakes. I'm just gonna say right now I applaud the Seattle defense for even keeping it a three uh, uh, just a, not even a touchdown game and the and the big winner in that one was Richard Sherman because he worked his ass off in that game offensive wise they need help because that whole Sunday night game against Arizona was punt 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 repeat flag holding on the offense holding on the offense Bl uh, punt punt repeat 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 the offense needs to wake up. And I'm going to just say this right now. Steven Hauschka, why you do this to us, man? You can't kick that chip shot to win it in overtime. 
Bruh, you gotta make those goddamn fucking chip shots, Hauska. Wake the fuck up. Literally. As a Seahawks fan, you gotta wake the fuck up. And stop missing those chip 20-some yard field goals that you should be making every week, every Sunday, every Thursday, every 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 Monday. You gotta be making those goddamn uh, kicks, Hauska. And then we have the New Orleans Saints who did lose to the Kansas City Chiefs. Of course, Drew Brees went off. Usually, he always goes off. Uh, he usually goes off on every team except for a few. But they're back on the winning. Uh, they're they're still losing. They're still second to last in the NFC North, NFC South. Of course, Atlanta is number one team right now in the South. In this matchup, I am going to take the Seattle Seahawks because I think they they need this win more, and their offense needs to wake the fuck up because if Drew Brees throw throw starts throwing the ball. Seattle's defense better step up, and they usually do. So I'm taking the Seattle Seahawks to beat the New Orleans Saints. Now, the next matchup, the Arizona Cardinals heading to Carolina to play the Carolina Panthers. Now, of course, the Arizona Cardinals did tie with the Seattle Seahawks last night on Sunday Night Football. Their kicker didn't have a great game either. Uh, I don't know his name. I just know that he shanked two field goal. He shanked, he shanked a field goal that could have won the game for the Arizona Cardinals, and he didn't. Defense looked... Defense... I mean, their def the Arizona's defense looks looks good, but of course, offense they look good. Josh Brown, of course, did not play. Larry Fitzgerald did fine. Palmer did fine. David Johnson had 100 yards, but it was not as a blowout as some Arizona fans would have believed in this, trying to get their revenge after last season against the Seahawks. Then you have the Carolina Panthers coming off a bye, and what do you call it? They're coming off a bye and. They're, they're terrible. They're as worse as the, the 49ers are right now. They have a... Other than Carolina has a good quarterback, 49ers don't. In this matchup, I am going to take the Arizona Cardinals because, I mean, they... Carolina... I can't trust Carolina to pick them anymore. Straight up. And I said I wouldn't pick Carolina again because they've kept losing. So I'm going to take Arizona over Carolina. Now the next matchup, the Oakland Raiders heading to... Florida to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, of course, Oakland Raiders won again last night against the Jacksonville Jaguars. 5-2 and two in the AFC West. First place right now, of course, Kansas City is right up there. And, of course, San Diego and, of course, Denver winning tonight. So they're still in the race. But it'll, right now, Oakland's on top. And they look good. Latavius Murray is back. What? Crabtree went off. ACDC did their work. Everybody did good in that game. They have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who did beat the hell out of the Niners, which I think every team who plays the Niners is just going to blow them out. Of course, Jameis Famous Winston went off. Mike Evans, they're, because of uh, Vincent Jackson being out for the season, Mike Evans is going to get those numbers. If, you have, if, you, if he's on fantasy waiver wires, pick him up because he'll help you big time. And, of course, the running back went off to Quiz Watcher. He, he, was, he became the eager beaver, if you know what I mean, if you know that reference of where he went to college at. Jaquiz Rogers went off on the Niners. Of course, every team is going off on the Niners. In this matchup, I am going to take the Oakland Raiders because the Oakland Raiders are the team in the West. Fred, like, here in California, it's about three teams. It's all, it's about, well, it's really about four teams, if you think about it. It's all about the Raiders, Niners, C Cowboys, and Rams. But coming from me, if you're not on the Raiders hype train, you need to get on it, and you need to get on it right now because the Raiders are legit this year. Legit. Best believe that. So I'm taking the Oakland Raiders to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now the next matchup. The Kansas City Chiefs heading to Lucas Oil Stadium to play the Indianapolis Colts. Now the Chiefs coming off a win. They look good. Spencer Ware look good. Jamal Charles, Alex Smith, Travis Kelsey, Ron, Eric Berry, Marcus Peters, uh, Jeremy Macklin looked good. Alex Smith looked good. They looked all good all around. Then you have the Colts, who barely won, and they should have lost if it wasn't for that sack fumble on Mariota and then run back for the touchdown. They could have lost that game. And honestly, with the Colts, I don't know which I'm going to get. I picked against them this week. They win. I picked for them. They lose last week against Houston. So it's an either or. In my opinion, I am going to take the Kansas City Chiefs to beat the Indianapolis Colts because I think the Chiefs have a better team, even though it's Andrew Luck and Alex Smith, of course. Now the next matchup. Rematch of Week 4. My New England Patriots against heading to Buffalo to play the Buffalo Bills. Now, of course, the New England Patriots got it done against Pittsburgh. LeGarrette Blunt went off. 
Edelman went off, Gronkowski, and of course, my man, Tom Brady, Tom Terrific Brady, the greatest of all time. Now, and then they're going to Buffalo, of course, Buffalo, thinking they're going to sweep the, the, the Patriots because they, they shut us out in, in Gillette, 23 to nothing. Bills fans, you really think you're going to beat Tom Brady? You, you beat a backup to a backup in week four. Think about it. You played a backup to a backup, Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett, Tom Brady. And you really think you guys are going to sweep us? You guys, you guys beat a rookie. You guys beat a rookie quarterback, and you're, calling the, you're saying that's a big win for the Bills. Rex Ryan and his fat-ass brother, Rob Ryan, the, Ryan, the fat-ass Ryan brothers, thinking they're going to they're gonna one-up the Patriots when this is our division and there's no competition. And, of course, the Buffalo Bills lost to the Miami Dolphins. How the hell do you lose to the Miami Dolphins when you had a lead and you let a kid out of my favorite, one of my two colleges, Boise State, Jay Ajayi, run 200 yards on your ass? What do you think LeGarrette Blunt's going to do? What do you think Tom Brady's going to do against that defense? He's going to put 300 yards. He's going to put at least 350 on your asses. So, I, of course, you know who I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with my Patriots over the Bills because the Bills are no... Nobody in the East can beat us. We have the nobody in the AFC East can beat us. Buffalo was the only team that beat us, but they beat a backup, so that doesn't really count. So we should be at least what six and a, uh, what do you call it, seven and zero, oh, if it wasn't for that Buffalo game. So of course I'm taking the New England Patriots to beat the Buffalo Bills. Of course. Now the next matchup. The New York Jets heading to Cleveland to play the Cleveland Browns. Now, of course, the Jets rebounded this week, beating the Baltimore Ravens. Their defense waked up, or woke up. Of course, Geno Smith did not uh, did play, but he did get hurt, and they had Fitzpatrick in. And, of course, Fitzpatrick bitched after the game, saying the New York Jets had no confidence in him. Like, they were trying, they had no confidence in him. So, Fitzpatrick, shut the fuck up, you stupid idiot, and just do your thing in New York and stop bitching. They have the Cleveland Browns, and what can you say about the Cleveland Browns? They're winless, and they and they have to start off another quarterback. Cody Kessler got hurt, so they went from a US USC quarterback to now, of course, Kevin Hogan, who was the starter for the Stanford Cardinals in college. So they went from two Pac-12 teams, the USC to Stanford, and of course, Kevin Hogan is not a is a great quarterback in college, but again. This Cleveland team is just like a round robin of quarterbacks, starting from RG3, Whitehurst, all the way up to now Kevin Hogan. And they have so much talent around. Them. They have Terrell Pryor Sr., who can actually do who actually played quarterback. And he was actually a good quarterback. They have Duke Johnson out of my the, from the U. They got Isaiah Crowell. They got Garrett Barnage. They got talent around them, but they just are not winning. And and this matchup. I don't see them. I don't see them winning, and I'm taking the New York Jets to beat Cleveland because, honestly, coming from me, I think Cleveland go, say maybe two and fifteen or zero oh and sixteen or one and fifteen, one of those, and they may just get the number one draft pick in the in the NFL draft next year. So I'm taking the Jets over the Browns. Now the next matchup: the Detroit Lions heading to Houston to play the Houston Texans. Now, of course, the Detroit Lions got it done again. In the clutch, in the fourth quarter, against the Redskins. And, of course, Houston just lost to the Denver Broncos at home. The Denver Broncos on Monday Night Football tonight. So they're on a losing streak, but they're still they're still up there in the AFC South. Of course, their competition is the Colts and maybe the Titans. Jaguars, no. Jaguars, no. I'm sorry. No offense, Jaguar fans, but they're not in it anymore. Detroit Lions look good. Matthew Stafford look good. There may be, there may be that one team in the NFC North other than the Packers that are good right now is the Detroit Lions. Do not sleep on the Lions. Stafford looked good. Um, uh, what do you call it? Anquan Bolden got the game-winning touchdown. Golden Tate looking good. Muhammad Sanu looking good. They all look good. And then with the Houston Texans, of course, of course losing the Denver's. No easy, just like not easy to beat Denver at mile high. Of course, with all those weapons, of course, on Denver's offense and defense, not easy to win. So I can understand them losing this game. In this matchup, I am going to take the Detroit Lions and picking Detroit again this week. So I have a good feeling they're going to get it done. So I am taking Detroit over Houston. Now, the Thursday night football rematch for week eight. 
the San Diego Chargers heading to Mile High to play the Denver Broncos. Now, of course, the San Diego Chargers did come from behind and beat the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons, really. You guys couldn't beat the 2-4 and four Chargers. Of course, I'll get to the Falcons in a minute. Then we have the Denver Broncos who did get a big-time win at home, bounced back after their two losses, so they needed this. Of course, they, of course they're going to get it done at home, so it makes sense. Now, this matchup, of course, San Diego looked good against Atlanta. Melvin Gordon went off. He finally went off. V Rivers had a good game. Of course, same thing with Denver. There. So, in this matchup, and of course, I did pick Denver last time. So, I'm going to stick with Denver this time. So, I did lose the game the first time they ma they matched up. I did pick Denver over San Diego, if you remember. So, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take Denver to beat San Diego this week. Now, the next matchup. The Green Bay Packers heading to the Jordan Dome to play them Dirty Birds, the Atlanta Falcons. Now, the Packers did beat the Bears on Thursday Night Football. Uh, on Thursday, of course. But it was not a decisive win. It was, again, not, it was not a good game for the Packers. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is, is not having his best season. That is for sure. He is having his, not even his, he's having maybe his worst season. I mean... When you don't have a running game without Starks, without Eddie Lacy, and Lacy's out for the season, so you're stuck with Starks and Niall Davis, it's hard to win on the on the ground. I mean, they still have their talents on wide receivers: Cobb, Montgomery, Devontae Adams, Reggie Nelson. Defense still good, but they're not winning consistently, blowing out teams. And now, and then, I now I'm talking about the Atlanta. And now, and, and now, what can I say about the Falcons? You blow a lead and you gamble on fourth and one in overtime when you should have just been smart with the ball. You go for it and you run the ball. You don't trust your defense to get it done. If you guys would have just punted, even your coach said it was a stupid decision. And if your coach is saying it, then then there you go. I mean, like I. I don't tr I do trash on the Falcons a lot, but I do like some of the players. I do like Julio Jones. I do like Devon. Uh, I do like Tevin Coleman. I do like uh, the other uh, what do you call Matt Matty Eyes. I do like him. I like Devonte Freeman. I've had him on my fantasy team for years and Julio. But when you pick them, like you're taking a risk. And then I picked them and knowing thinking they can beat a two and four team, yet they were up seventeen. And they lost in overtime when they went for a stupid, and let me repeat again, stupid fourth and one going for it. Dan Quinn, he's a stupid idiot even thinking of doing that in overtime. If you trust your defense, then you give, you, you trust your defense. You, they, hey, you guys aren't, you guys aren't four and one for nothing. Uh, you guys are not four and one for nothing. And, and you guys are first place in the NFC South, and yet you don't trust your defense to get you the ball back, so you go for it on fourth down. Dan Quinn, you, I want to say it right now. I'm going to make this a thing. You just made the list, the list of dangerously. That's me. I'm putting Dan Quinn on the list because of what he did. We're gonna. I think we're going to do this each week of um, whoever makes the stupidest decision becomes part of the list of dangerously, and that's and knowing as you as a that's going to say, Dan Quinn, stupid idiot. But in this matchup, I am going to go with the Atlanta Falcons because I don't think Green Bay is as good as they used to be. Like, it's really a two-man race in the NFC North with the Vikings and the Lions. So, I'm giving Atlanta one more chance. Now, Atlanta better beat the Packers because if they can't even beat the Packers, I'm not going to trust them when they get to the playoffs. No offense, Falcons fans, but you guys got to... Get it together. I'm picking. I, I've, I've picked you so many times before. Before yet, you guys couldn't beat a two and four Chargers team. Tell me why? Why Falcons fans? Why are you gonna be doing this to your boy? So of course I am gonna take the Atlanta Falcons to beat the Green Bay Packers. But of course the first name on the list of dangerously is Dan Quinn for his stupid fourth down and goal, for, fourth down going forward in overtime. So, Dan Quinn, you're on the list. Number one as a stupid idiot. Now, now the next matchup, maybe the most in interesting Sunday night football matchup this week. The Philadelphia Eagles heading to Jerry Land to play the Dallas Cowboys. Now, of course, the Dallas Cowboys are 
uh, coming off a bye. And guess who's back? Des Bryant will be back in the lineup this week. And, of course, who are they starting, Cowboy fans? It's not Tony Romo. It's Dak Prescott, the, the legit starter of the Dallas Cowboys for the rest of the season. I don't care if Romo becomes 100%. Romo, your your ass is staying on the bench. Damn it, you're staying on the bench until Brett, Dak Prescott gets hurt. Hopefully not. But you're staying. You're staying your your old broken back, Bane breaking Batman's back ass on the ground on the bench. Son of a bitch, you're staying on the you're staying on the bench, Tony Romo. And I know you Cowboy fans gotta agree with me. Dak Prescott is the legit. Legit starter. And then you have the Philadelphia Eagles, who did beat the Minnesota Vikings. Of course, Minnesota is no longer undefeated thanks to the Eagles. Of course, the defense showed up. Wentz didn't have a great game. He didn't have a good game. He had a eh game. I mean, he did win, of course. They got the job done. And, of course, uh, their defense, but they said their offense needs to do something because I'm just going to say it right now, Philadelphia defense, I double dog dare you to stop Zeke the Freak from getting over 100 yards because no team has stopped them except for the against the, uh, except for the Giants. Their only loss, of course. So, four te- uh, five teams have not I mean four four teams have not stopped him go over 100 yards. I dare you. I seriously dare you Eagles Eagles defense to stop this boy because this boy is legit and if you've heard me Talk about in my predictions, Zeke the Freak is the Cowboys' next Emmett Smith. He is that talented and that, that, he is just it. Fucking it. And coming from me, I am going to take the Dallas Cowboys to beat the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday Night Football. Now, the Monday Night game. That's going against the night after WWE Hell in a Cell, which I will be watching with my with the Glorious Four on Sundays. Uh, Sunday at 5 o'clock, of course. With the Minnesota Vikings heading to Soldier Field to play the Chicago Bears. Now, of course, the Minnesota Vikings are coming off a loss. They did not look good. Their running back, running back, their the running back situation is garbage without Adrian Peterson. They can have McKinnon and Asiata, but what can you do without AP? It's hard to win without AP running the show in Minnesota. And of course. Their coach called out their called out called them out. So let's see if they can nut up or shut the fuck up. Then you have the Chicago Bears. Of course, they did lose. They did lose Brian Hoyer, so he's out for the season. So they're going with a backup to that's not Jay Cutler. And of course, this team is as almost as worse as the. There's like three worst teams in the in the NFC: Bears, Niners, Panthers. So what makes you think I'm gonna pick? with Chicago this week, even though they're at home. So I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings to beat the Chicago Bears. And those are my Week 4 NFL predictions. Now, I hope you enjoyed my Week 8 predictions. Comment below, who do you have winning this week? The comment section was uh, was really good last week and the week before. Let's uh, let's keep that going, a Dangerous Alliance uh, people, of, of course, people on YouTube. Let's keep that streak going. Please like, comment, and subscribe and become part of this Dangerous Alliance each week. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.